Hi everyone, I'm Richard Polonetsky here with you today and I'm extremely excited to have the opportunity to interview the hottest rising star in the NBA today, New York Knicks forward Lance Thomas. Lance, thanks so much for being with us today. It's a pleasure, thank you. Lance, you are really a model, as I see it, of success, not only on the court, but off the court as well. And the first question I have for you, which I think a lot of people can get a lot of value of, is what is your internal dialogue? What are the things that you say to yourself on a consistent basis that allow you to succeed at the level that you do? Um, I always tell myself, one is to trust my work, but I also tell myself to set realistic goals. I tell myself to make sure that I'm better today than I was yesterday. I tell myself to maximize the day in front of me, and I also tell myself to never leave, to sell myself short in one day. And is this something that you wake up and that consciously comes to your mind? you have a specific time of day that you do this? Is it something that recurs throughout the day? Um, it, just, it just happens throughout the day. I mean, uh, I've just always done it. It's something that I've, uh, I really don't have a set regimen for it. It just happens you know, throughout the day depending on what I plan on doing that day. But regardless, these things run through my mind and keep me motivated. When you say you've always done it, since you were young, since you were a child, or? This has been, uh, since I was young, I could say I've probably been doing this since about the age of eight, where wow. I just try to uh, be the best at whatever I'm doing. That's really great. It's really, really a gift to have that internal dialogue to, to keep you charged and moving forward through all the, the challenges. And speaking of challenges, you know, a lot of people look at successful people like yourself and, and the Hollywood celebrities and, and authors, etc., etc., musicians, and they just see the success part. And they think that they're privileged or gifted or just lucky, but they don't see the process that went into that success. And mm -hmm. you didn't just roll out of bed and, and get handed a, a get free card into the NBA. You've worked hard to get here and have clawed your way really through the top. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, I enjoyed my journey. Um, I feel like uh, eventually when I'm done playing, I'll have a great story to tell. Um, but my journey has been tough. Um, tough because it takes a lot of uh, mental toughness to not be discouraged when things don't go your way. Um, enough to just really appreciate the things that I've done to give myself a chance. And uh, now that the chance is here, um, I haven't looked back. I'm just continuing to move forward and trust everything I've done. The word trust comes up a lot in interviews, in your Instagram, mm -hmm. trust your work, your hashtag. Where did that come from? Um, it's just come from uh, how I just attack the work grind that I do. I mean, I work pretty much year round. I mean, I just some my summer workouts are, you know, grueling. Uh, my during the season, I mean, I still push myself to the limit, and you know, in games, uh, I empty my whole clip. I'm ready to, you know, make sure that I'm completely exhausted, not only for myself, but I feel like my teammates deserve my full effort, and the city does as well. You know, it's interesting. Few people have the opportunity to really give it their all in anything in life, mm -hmm. and you do this day in and day out. What does that feel like to know you are pushing yourself? to the limits and beyond, and how do you go to that next limit? It's taxing. Um, I mean, uh, I really play as hard as I can. I train as hard as I can. Um, I just give maximum effort all the time, and I mean, I wish, I'm not a machine, but I, I treat myself like I am, and it's, sometimes it catches up with me because I find myself very tired sometimes, but um, I, I think about the bigger picture and why I'm doing it, and I'm doing it to win. I'm doing it because my teammates deserve it. And um, with that said, I forget about fatigue. Hmm. How do you restore yourself after you've pushed yourself to the limit where you can go no more, the fatigue sets in, how do you get back into that peak condition again? Oh, got to get rest, um, hydration, um, and being in a happy place after the game. Um, my dog is definitely going to help me with that. And your um, dog's name is Romeo. Romeo. He's yeah. your best friend. Best friend. Best friend. He helps me with that. Um, you know, just with genuine just excitement to see me and, you know, whenever I, I'm tired after the game or just tired in general, I just see him and I just get just fueled with so much just 
joy from them that it, it really helps my recovery process. What a beautiful gift, truly man's best friend. Absolutely. You know, it's interesting, I read that you had put on 15 pounds of muscle, mm -hmm. and a lot of guys like to put on 15 pounds of muscle, myself included. How did you do that? Uh, I had a really uh, good training regimen this summer. Uh, my basketball trainer, uh, Marcel Scott, in New Orleans, his uh, program is called Back to Basics Academy. And um, we got after it this summer. I mean, summer's prior to that as well, but we really get after it. I mean, there's days where he pretty much tries to break me down to, you know, to nothing, to build me back up to something very strong. And um, I really owe a lot of, you know, what's happening this season for me to him just for um, pushing me. Um, I, I don't think I need a lot of uh, motivation or people to push me, but um, just for someone who actually just sees how determined I am to you know, maximize even simple drills. If we're doing a drill and he tells me to run as hard as I can off this one cone, the, the, the attention to detail, the mental toughness to actually do it. Um, you, like I said, you don't, just don't see it right then and there, but I'm seeing so much of it right now as it's all just coming into fruition for me on the court. So every rep, every jump, every sprint, every ounce of protein mm -hmm. is that step up in the ladder to that higher level of success. And you see every step that way. Yes, and I'm, 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 just, I'm just enjoying the, the journey, the grind, just everything that's happening from it. I mean, a lot of this is uh, from the workouts I've done, you know, from the summer, but in my whole career. You know, I've been working on a lot of things for a long time, and you know, you might work on certain things, you might not have the opportunity to showcase any of it just because of the situation you're in. So, you know, just staying true to my grind, I'm actually having the opportunity to showcase these things I've been working on for years. And on top of that, still giving it a thousand percent every time I'm on the court, and I just feel like everyone's appreciating it now. That's amazing. And speaking of appreciation, you're getting a lot of accolades for. NBA coaches recently spoke about how you are the, the most improved player in the league. And Kevin Durant called you not only his favorite player in the league, but his favorite person. What is it that they're seeing in you? Um, they see a guy who's just locked in, just determined to win. Um, a person who, if we set a goal, is going to give everything that he has to reach it. And uh, every person that I've actually had as a teammate will probably say the same. I mean, uh, I give it, I bring it, and um, it's not me selfishly doing it. It's me doing it for everyone. So you really have that sense that you're part of a whole. Your individual role is taken care of by that internal mindset that you have and the dedication, the intense training. Mm -hmm. But you really do feel yourself as a team member. Interesting question. I have read you had said that you always had to make the team. Yes. What do you mean by that? Um, I mean, I signed uh, unguaranteed contracts. So pretty much at any given moment, they could be like, hey, we don't want you anymore. So you're always on this trial period. Pretty much, yeah. And that's, uh, I think that's what kept my toughness and my, my grit where it needed to be. I've always had a chip on my shoulder where I never was complacent. I'm not complacent now. I don't think I have the ability to be complacent. So you never feel comfortable? No. You always feel like you have to strive to another level. Absolutely. What an incredible mindset. Keeps wow. Me, she keeps me shielded. Really amazing. Do you have any rituals that you do on the court, off the court, that keep you in top condition mentally, physically, spiritually? Uh, I pray. I pray before every game. Um, we have a chapel service before every game. Uh, me and a few of my teammates go. Um, while we're, you know, having the uh, national anthem song, I pray again. Uh, I pray after the game, and uh, I just keep my faith in God, and you know, just follow its course. Thank God, that's very beautiful. I know it's a personal thing, but mm -hmm. would you care to share an example of a type of prayer um, that I you just, might elicit? I just pray to keep, uh, you know, our teammates uh, safe. Everyone that's playing on the court that night safe. Uh, I pray that you know the Lord allows us to uh, do the things we need to do to be the team we want to be. Um, I pray for the strength that I can allow myself to be my absolute best for my team that night. And um, 
I just pray for, you know, all the other things that we complain about when there's other real life things going on and remember that basketball is just a game and people are really going through real life things. You know, people are losing their lives and people aren't as blessed or fortunate. So I don't take any of that for granted in my prayer. That's a very beautiful prayer and tapping in and plugging into the source of all is certainly a, a great foundation to, uh, to build everything upon. Absolutely. Really amazing. Thank you. Derek Fisher, your coach of the New York Knicks. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you said something to the effect that they talked a lot about you and there was something about you that was really consistent with what they wanted to have both on the court and equally, if not even more importantly, off the court. Mm -hmm. What does he mean by that? Um, I think he just realizes that I bring it every day. Um, and it's, it's contagious. Um, I feel like my teammates really feed off of that. I really feel like, um, you know, ha setting the example for the younger guys or even guys that are older than me. I mean, just showing that it's possible to give it 100 every day. I feel like it's, you know, helping the team. I feel like coaches are noticing it. And, you know, it's not easy. It's, it's very hard to give 100% effort every day. I mean, I... I say I do it. There's probably days where it's 95. I mean, just from just physical exhaustion, but mentally, I'm always in 100%. There's so many people out there who are plagued with procrastination. They don't can't motivate themselves. They don't feel like they're capable. They don't really make the effort to do what they really can do mm -hmm. if they just went on that path. What kind of advice would you give to someone who's maybe unmotivated or is procrastinating but really does have the potential for a bright and successful future? Um, I think that they need to look themselves in the mirror and uh, ask themselves, do they really want to waste the talent that God has given them? Do they really want to waste something that people would <laughs> literally die for? Um, whether it's athleticism, whether it's, uh, you know, family, uh, whether it's, you know, health, um, you know, I feel like we as people take advantage of the things that are very valuable in life. And um, if you don't have motivation, remember that somebody else has it way worse than you. Wow. So the perspective that they're approaching life with is just not serving them? It's not. It's not realistic. It's not broad enough to tap every type of lifestyle that's happening. I mean, like I said, everybody has a completely different set of cards that they're dealt with, but a lot of us have very high trump cards in our hands and we're not using them. I heard you talking about looking in the mirror on a previous occasion. Mm -hmm. Is there a type of mirror exercise or something you do? When you look in the mirror, what, what do you tell yourself? What do you see? What's happening there? I just ask myself real questions. What do, you wanna, what do you want in life? What do you want out of this game? What do you want from today? And I just answer them in my head and I just keep moving forward. And you're really connecting with yourself. Like you're looking into your eyes and you're having a very deep internal dialogue. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that um, it's very important to do that. Um, you know, you can get advice from other people, but what better critic to have than yourself? So you hold yourself to a standard higher than anyone holds you to? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I'm me. I'm, I'm Lance Thomas. I, I know what I'm capable of and I know the things that uh, I feel like I can do and I have things that I can't do and I set realistic goals on myself. What would you say to a young man or a young woman who is dreaming of becoming an NBA player? What, what advice would you give to them if you could look them in the eye to help them achieve that goal? How bad do you want it? What are you going to do to attain it? And if you have the opportunity to get it, how would you go about it? Have them focus on those questions. Absolutely. Honestly answer those questions mm -hmm. and pursue that path. That's exactly. I know you said you appreciate every moment of the journey to where you are now and where you're going. Absolutely. Is there anything now, older, wiser, that you would do differently if you could from the start of that journey? I wouldn't change a thing. But if I was to change one thing, I wish I would have pretty much documented it while it was happening with, work, with writing to see where I was at at that point in time. Wow, to have a very 
accurate, detailed analysis. Yeah, the, 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 the things that I speak to myself with when I look in the mirror, I wish I would have written some of that stuff down and then look back at it and see if that is still adding up to now. Wow, the contrast of how you've grown. Absolutely. You've gr grown tremendously. And speaking of growing, your three point shots have grown tremendously. How did you develop that? Um, repetitions, work. Um, just a lot of repetitions, a lot of work, uh, a lot of confidence, um, and just getting after it. I mean, pretty much for shooting, I feel like it's just a lot of reps, uh, a lot of game reps, and uh, a lot of confidence is also a part of that. Now, you talk about confidence, and I saw an interview with you where I thought this was the coolest thing in the world. And someone talked about how NBA players have big egos. And you gave a beautiful response to that, which I think applies masterfully to success. And you said something to the effect that you kind of have to have an ego to reach that level, because people automatically vilify, quote unquote, ego as something terrible. In some cases it is, mm -hmm. but you put a spin on it that I, I've never heard before. Can you uh, share more of that with us, please? I mean, uh, to get where we're at, you have to have an ego. Um, we're playing at the highest level. So without an ego, I don't think that you would necessarily have a chance to be here or sustain what you have already done to be where you're at. How do you develop or feed that ego? Because you are a perfect gentleman, you're a real person, you're a spiritual person, you're a creative person, but yet you have a powerful and potent ego, quote unquote, mm -hmm. that charges and empowers you enough to become a professional NBA winning player. How can someone develop that ego and keep that balance to keep their feet on the ground and maintain that spirituality and stay a, a good person with an ego? Um, you just gotta, just like I, you gotta trust your work. I, I keep coming back to that because it really is the core of everything that I'm doing. Um, you just have to just, just go for it. I don't, I don't see a reason to look back. Um, you can't get yesterday back. You can't get a year ago back. I can't get draft day back where I wasn't called. I can't get any of that back. But I can attack what's in front of me right now, and I have an amazing opportunity to, you know, hopefully make my first playoffs in the NBA. Um, that's the only thing I'm thinking about right now. Um, I really want to win. I want to win for my teammates. I want to win for the city. And selfishly, I want to have my first playoffs this season. So I'm going to do everything in my power to get there. Well, that's a fantastic goal. and. Uh and you may very well be in those playoffs yeah, so. with you at the helm. You're getting a lot of positive feedback now, both from coaches and players all across the NBA, the media. What about the times when there wasn't the positive accolades and there were negative things that were being said to you and playing situations that weren't working out? How did you keep it together and stay on course to become the success that you now are? Um, everything that uh, is negative towards me, anything that has knocked me back a bit, um, it's just throwing wood in the furnace. I'm really fired up by it. And um, I never, I mean, at this time I'm a human, I, I get depressed, I get uh, anxious, I get, you know, uh, upset, um, but I don't let it linger. Um, if I'm upset or depressed at that time, I do uh, whatever's necessary to, to rid that and to take it with me to uh, allow me to just develop an even stronger hunger, a, a stronger vision, a stronger goal to make sure that I'm ready to keep moving forward and not let any of the negative things bring me down. How do you move past negativity, depression, anger, fear, frustration, anxiety? So many people, they just sticks with them and almost paralyzes them or, or, or disables them to a degree. How do you move past it so quickly? Um, it's happened so many times uh, and it's happened a lot. So um, I just find ways to deal with it. Um, you just have to just find what works for you. Um, uh, for me, I really just feel like I just need to just brush it off. Um, whatever it is, whatever what was said, whatever has happened, uh, move forward. I mean, I feel like other opportunities will be there. Um, if you stay coarse and, you know, again, trust your work, 
hopefully, you know, another door opens. And if not, at least, hey, I knew I gave it my all, and I can live with that. So focus on something that you're excited about, something that empowers you, focusing on that goal or that dream. Absolutely. What's your next big dream? My next big dream is to win a new championship. Um, I won a championship everywhere else except the NBA, and I really, really want one. So I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that I get one before I'm done playing basketball. I have a sense you're going to win that championship, I and really probably sooner than later. I hope so. I'm going to have you dream even bigger. What happens after you win that championship? What's the next dream? After I win that, the next dream is to make sure I have a comfortable life for me and my family. Um, I want to, you know, just make sure that everyone is just happy. Um, I feel like, you know, life, you just want to live it. You want to, you know, live it comfortably with the people you love and care about. And I just want to make sure my family's okay. And, uh, you know, after basketball, you know, I'll, I'll turn the next to the next chapter when it happens. But as of now, I just want to make sure that, you know, my family and everybody's happy. That's fantastic. Absolutely. And speaking about family, your, your mom is a big influence in your life yes. and you have a great relationship with her. Tell us more about how she has played a role in your success and, and not only on the court but off the court as well. She's always honest with me. Um, always honest with me and it's amazing to have someone like that. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother's my best friend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we don't have to speak every day for that either. I mean, you know, there are days where we don't speak to each other but you know, she always calls with a purpose. She always calls to lift me up. She calls to fuel me, you know. Fueling is, hey, you had a good game, and fueling is also, hey, you didn't play as hard as you should have. You, you know, things of that nature. So she knows how to ignite a burning fire in me to be my best. And um, with that said, I mean, that's all I need. I mean, from the number one person in my life, I feel like that's all that you know, I could ask for is honesty all of the time. And what's her perspective now with respect to your success? And now you're, you're, I mean, you literally are the hottest rising star in the NBA now. What's, what's her perspective on that? Um, I don't think her approach to me or anything has changed. She's still the same. Um, she still knows that I have more in the tank. She expects more, and she's going to get more. Wow. So you're making mom proud. Absolutely. Making a whole lot of other people proud, too. That's the plan. When you say trust your work, mm -hmm. are you talking not only about the things you do, but the intuition within you, that guiding voice that, unfortunately, a lot of people don't listen to? They'll ask every person under the sun, from the bus driver to their best friend and whoever mm -hmm. else, but that voice inside themselves that they don't listen to. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it is, you know, trust your preparation for whatever you've done, uh, whether it's for a big test, if you studied nonstop, nonstop, don't go to the test, you know, that you study so hard for and second guess how much you study. Or, you know, with me in basketball, I'm not going to second guess how hard I worked in the summer. You know, when I'm open, I'm going to shoot the ball. So uh, internally, I mean, that's a conversation you have with yourself. Lance, you know you worked out your hardest this summer. You gave it everything you have. There's two minutes left in the game. You know what to do. Let's figure this game out. I, t I have that conversation with myself in the game. And then I vocalize it and I speak to my teammates. I know what fuels them. And we find a way to ignite each other and try to figure everything out at the end of the game. That's beautiful. So when you're in this pressure situation on that court, you see that clock ticking down. Maybe you're down. Maybe it's close. It's a pivotal game. There's this unwavering, unshakable confidence that rises up inside you, that just propels you through that victory, or at least to get to that end of the game knowing you've done everything in your power to be successful at it. Yes, it is. I, I, again, I trust my work. I know that at the end of the game, if the guy I'm guarding is, uh, you know, not tired, I wasn't going hard enough. A lot of people talk about the value of mentors in succeeding at something they desire to achieve. Did you have any mentors in your life, or do you currently have any mentors in your life who help you to succeed? I have a lot. I have a lot. Uh, I had uh, my high school coach, well, the high school coaches. I had uh, Coach Dan Darty uh, when I was in Scotch Plains Family High School. Um, he believed in me. He gave me the opportunity to, uh, to be my best. He really basically, you know, saw a lot of potential in me, and from from the start, just 
got after it and got me a lot better. Um, I also had a, a team, a travel team called the Fanwood Flames uh, back in my hometown uh, that I played with Coach Bob Lavalo, um, Coach Smith, Greg Smith. And, um, you know, it was our farm team. Everybody from the neighborhood played in it, and we traveled, and we had a really, really good team. So they really started me at an early age. Uh, my other high school coach, uh, Coach Dan Hurley, um, very, very, very great coach. Um, really got the best out of me every day. I think that's when I really started uh, gaining grit, a lot of grit and toughness, uh, playing for him because it wasn't easy. Uh, if you know anything about, uh, about Dan, he's very fired up and uh, it's very fun playing for him. And then I also had another one in, uh, in Coach uh, Mike Krzyzewski. I, that dude, um, best coach. Um, he really, really, um, really showed me how to be just a, a man uh, when I was a boy. Um, he showed me um, never to let anyone break me, um, how not to be broken on and off the court. How did he show you that? Um, he put me through a lot. He put us all through a lot. Um, our practices were amazing. Uh, they, but they were tough. They were really uh, gut check practices to see what you were made of. And um, I had four years of that. And uh, I think that's part of the reason why I am right now where I am because uh, my mental toughness is at an all time high because of him. Um, who else? I had Coach Monty Williams, uh, my first uh, NBA coach, who really um, let me know what the ropes were like and pushed me every day um, and really showed me how to be a professional in the NBA. Um, my mother, uh, who's just the best person in this planet. Um, my uncle Monty, um, he's definitely someone who's always been there for me and really showed me the ropes and really was always supportive of me even uh, you know when I wasn't playing well early on in high school or if I would get discouraged for that bad games or if I just wasn't playing as good as I thought I should have, really just keeping me level-headed and letting me know that you're going to be a great player one day and stick with it. And um, with that said, I just, I've had so many influential people in my life. I mean, I'm probably leaving some out, so I hope they don't take offense to it about the scene. It's but like at the Academy Awards where yeah. you're the read off the names <laughs> to anyone else. That's but exactly what it's like right now. But right. Uh, regardless, I, I'm very, you know, blessed to have those people in my life to help me uh, be where I'm at at the, this present time now. And um, like I said, I'm enjoying the journey, enjoying the grind, but I remember those people who were there. If these people weren't playing roles in your life, do you think you'd be where you are today? Um, no. I'm going to be realistic with myself, no. Um, I had no idea what mental toughness was. Um, and every one of them played that role in getting you where you are? Everyone. I had no idea what mental toughness was before I... I started playing for Coach Danny and Coach Krzyzewski. I never, you know, knew what it was like to be a professional until I had the opportunity to be one. And having Coach Monty tell me these things, uh, you know, I would have never really had the fundamentals in my game if it wasn't, you know, for my early travel teams and my AAU teams I played for. And um, I wouldn't have had the, the burning desire to be, you know, tough and to want to be great at things if it wasn't for, you know, the way my mom raised me. So. Um, everyone has played their part, and uh, you know I was the recipient of it. So I mean, I just want to thank all of them for everything they've done. And I still have so much more to learn, so much more life to live, um, so much more of Lance outside of basketball to live. So um, even if you know basketball is to end tomorrow, uh, I still feel like from the values I learned from those people that I still will be successful. With a fantastic perspective, wow! And God forbid, you know. The NBA folded tomorrow. They went bankrupt, which won't happen. But God forbid that happened. What would you do? Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I know that when uh, I do have the opportunity to make that decision, that it'll be a good one based off of the things that I've been through and the people that I've met. So they've really helped you to develop in ways that probably wouldn't have occurred otherwise. Mm -hmm. Really fantastic. A lot of people think that just because someone makes it to the NBA as a pro basketball player, that that gives them uh, an open, free card to play anywhere in the world, any league in the world, and they can just go there and rest on their laurels and show up and, and be good to go. But you know firsthand that's not the case because you played in China. What was that experience like? Oh, it was, it 
was tough. I mean, uh, it's a competitive league uh, with competitive uh, management. And, uh, you know, you can be replaced at any given moment, especially since teams only can keep two, uh, two Americans on each team. So if you don't bring it, they're shipping you out and they're bringing another American that's going to help them win. Did that help you step up your game or your mindset being in there in a foreign country with this whole new set of rules? Absolutely. I mean, uh, my mindset was I actually came in and to replace someone. So I wasn't going to allow someone to come replace me. Right. Um, I was already being replaced back home. I was not going to end up you know, letting myself be replaced somewhere else. And you succeeded. Absolutely. Fantastic. Where do you think your passion for the game comes from? Uh, my desire to compete. I feel like once I lose that, I won't want to play anymore. Um, I love to compete. Um, I love to, you know, put myself in a position to win uh, when I'm competing. And uh, I feel like once I lose that burning desire to do that, uh, I think that that's when I'm going to hang it up. Who's your favorite player in the NBA right now? And it can't um, be Lance Thomas. Uh, <laughs> um, I have a, I have a couple um, playing right now. Um, uh, I love Carmelo Anthony's game. I mean, he's my teammate, but I, I mean, I felt that same way before I even got to New York and also Kevin Durant, um, two guys who are, you know, starters in the All-Star game for the East and the West and two guys who I've had the opportunity to play alongside and work alongside and see that it's not a coincidence that they're in a position they're in. Do you see things in them that you see in yourself with respect to the mindset, with respect to the perspective that they take in their success? Absolutely. They bring it. They bring it. Um, they bring it. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing to see that, you know. Uh, most people only see the, the finished product when we play and compete on the games, but so much more goes into it, you know, behind closed doors in our practices. And like I said, I've had the opportunity to be a part of that with both of them. And, it's, it's at the highest level possible how high these guys, you know, compete. And I feel like my competitive level is just up there as high as theirs, you know. Um, maybe the, the skill levels are completely, you know, different. But as far as the competitive nature, I feel like, you know, we're all on that same level. I've heard it said that if you want to become really great, get around someone who's doing even better than you are. Is there anyone who fills that role in the NBA for you right now? Carmelo. He's my teammate. Um, I feel like he's the best at what he does in the NBA, and um, I see it every day. So, I mean, why not, you know, ask him questions? Why not ask him his experience, things he's been through, um, work work habits, uh, you know, things he does to be in that position. I mean, you know, we, we're two completely different people, different players, different journeys to get where we're at, but I think we both have the same common goal, which is to win. So uh, I pick his brain daily. I mean, he probably gets sick of me asking questions. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, he's one of my favorite teammates ever, and uh, I'm just very happy to be playing alongside him. That's really fantastic. And he's lucky to have you as a teammate as well, as are the New York Knicks, as are the New York fans. How's it feel playing in your hometown? You were born in Brooklyn? Mm -hmm. it's How's it feel playing? Unbelievable. unbelievable. This is an amazing thing. And um, I mean, I smile every time. I mean, it's, I'm in the moment now, so. Uh, you know, it's it's such a great thing. I mean, I, sometimes I don't even believe it. I mean, but you know, when the game comes on and I uh, put that uniform on, it's 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 game time. <laughs> but you know, I, I used to be a fan, but naturally now I am a Nick. So um, I feel like you know the teams that were before me really have raised the bar uh, to what it is to be a New York Nick, to play with that toughness every night, to have that grit, to have that you know desire to win. Um, I want to bring that back. Well, you got it. You spoke about being in the moment. And obviously, to compete and succeed, you must be in the moment, whether you're a basketball player, an airline pilot, a soldier, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Do you spend, do you find you spend most of your life in the moment? Yeah, I'm always in the moment. Um, that's the way to live life. You got to just be in the moment and uh, just go for it. I mean, I, as far as basketball, I'm in the moment. so. Uh, I give everything I have, you know, because I never know when I can play it again. You know, God forbid something happens, I at least want to, you know, make sure that I can say I went out and given it all. It seems you embody literally every success principle that most people say are vital to succeeding. Living in the moment, having great mentors, pushing yourself beyond limits, holding yourself to standards that no one would hold you to, holding yourself higher than that. 
and really making a commitment every day to being your best and giving your all. Yeah, just try. I give it everything I have and, you know, if things work out, they do, but at least at the bare minimum, I know that I gave everything I had to try it. And you didn't study any personal development, self-empowerment books to do this. This is something that organically happened in your life and, and values that you aspire to and, mm -hmm. and move forward with. Yeah, just, I just go for it. Um, I feel like, you know, if you really want something, you go for it. If it doesn't work, assess what you didn't do. Assess if you really want what you were going after and go at it a different way. One last question, and then we're going to wrap it up. And this has been absolutely incredible. I really appreciate this Absolutely. really wonderful dialogue. And I think a lot of people are going to get a lot of value listening to you and seeing firsthand the example that you are providing of how to succeed in life. A lot of people equate success with having to give up something, give up their values, become cutthroat, give up their family time, give up their health and well-being. In other words, there's a huge sacrifice in place that someone has to make and often that will hold them back from success. What's the advice you would give to people on how they can succeed and still maintain the whole? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would just say that uh, if you're passionate about what you're doing or what you're trying to do, um, you'll figure it out. Um, you know, I, I'm living my dream, but I don't get to see my family all the time. I don't get to always do the things I want to do, but uh, you know, I want to win a championship. So some, you have to give something up. Something's going to give, you know, you're going to give something up trying to, you know, reach something bigger than you. And uh, a championship is bigger than just me because it's something that all of us on our team want. It's going to be something that if it does happen, we've done it together. So. Um, it takes a high level of commitment to do that. And, um, you know, if you really want something bigger than yourself, what are you willing to give up? That's beautiful. So, in essence, what is the price you're willing to pay to have what you really want in life? Absolutely. And go ahead and get busy paying that price. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Lance Thomas, this has been an incredible interview. The New York Knicks are very lucky to have you. The fans of New York are very lucky to have you. And we are incredibly lucky to have you here with us today. Thank you so much Thank for you. being with us here today. Lance Thomas, New York Knicks forward, the hottest rising star in the NBA today. I'm Richard Polonetsky. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.